Hello YouTube, welcome back, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the game room. Uh, today we're going to do another video in my commander series, which I'm where I show decks from uh, my various different commanders. I mean, you can say I've got about 40 different decks, so we keep going. All right, today we're going to feature my rat deck, my Maranora tri tribal rat deck, which has got some... It, anyway, uh, Bloomborough is just about wrapping up, so we're basically finishing off... So we're going to do another tribal deck today, and we're going to show you a little bit, bit about it. I mean, you need to say, I'm going to, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. My name is Matthew, and for those who haven't seen me before, my name is Matthew. I do various videos about MTG. Um, I do various commander videos on my decks in my commander series, and I do a pack openings as well. I just, I'm about to do a pack opening for Dusk Morn in about a week. And see, as I'm filming this video on a Thursday, I'll be going to my pre-releases starting on Friday. So we'll be doing pre. I'll be get, get, getting some packs, and we'll be cracking some packs from the new set. So don't forget to join me for that later, probably in a week. I mean, you say that this is we're upstairs today as always. Let's just say that's the oh, nearly got a shot of me. Let's just say that I don't want to do that. That's the game's covered. I mean, and you say we've got the upstairs uh, the upstairs window. Let's just say that's the view. It's nice and sunny out there today. All right, we're going to get on get on with the video and say all right so today's we're going to do about my maranora commander deck I and mean, you see a lot of the cards in this deck are foil though so i'm trying to get used to it anyway the picture quality i've upgraded my phone to an iphone 13 pro so the picture quality should be good now all right this is maranora the featured commander so this came out so this is from the original kamigawa so this is the original kamigawa printing so this in foil was expensive and I, I liked it to get all my commanders in foil ideally. I've got all of them by one in foil. Anyway, this is Maranora. So he's a free of black and black for a two free. He's a non-legendary creature. He's a rat rogue. So this is from original Kamigawa. So and there's the in original Kamigawa, I don't know, like in the storyline. So I think the Nizumi are the rat people in the storyline. I'm not a storyline expert. All right, this card has also been reprinted in the uh, on the Bloom Burrow, the extra extra sheet, or I think it's the guest sheet, which you, you can you can still get you can get another printing of this. So a uh, Marinor has gone down in price. It was a £25 card in foil. It was more like a £45 card. I'm in the UK, though, so the prices I quote will be in prices. All right, don't, I'll, I'll link the, my link to the deck list on Moxfield underneath the video, as always. And don't forget, uh, you say, don't forget uh, this is my friend, uh, Red Man of Madness, who also has a YouTube channel. Don't forget to check out Red Man of Madness. Don't forget uh, Anton and Dennis do a great job. And they also sell singles on eBay uh, as well. So, so don't forget to like... Uh, comment and, and view their videos as well. All right, Maranor is a 2-3 for, uh, for 5 mana. It basically means all your rats have fear. For those that don't know fear, fear means they they can't be blocked except by black or artifact creatures. So this deck doesn't actually do as well against black creature decks that have lots of black creatures, but there are other ways to get around that. Anyway, it also has tap, sack a rat, put X black rats in, in, tokens into play where X is the number of rats you control. So you basically you you basically you're more or less doubling your rats every turn. I mean, so for the, for the for those that know, okay, so I'm going to say a bit little bit. The aim of Maranora is basically to play a load of rats and go very uh, um, go wide with them. You're not playing a lot of large creatures. You're playing a lot of very small ones. Although you are playing pump effects and that. And for those that know why this deck doesn't have any rat colonies or relentless rats. For those that know, they're, the, they're cards in Magic where you can play multiple copies of the cards in the deck. So in Commander, the normal build of various rat decks involve you playing rat colonies, relentless rats, and thrumming stone. I don't feel the strategy is very interesting. I feel it's dull and you have to play like 20 plus copies to make sure you hit on thrumming stone. If you want to go into those builds, I'm sure there are other decks. Anyway, we're going to play a rat tribal deck. And we say some of the rats aren't as good as it would... as. It, because they're, they're the creature, I'm playing all rats or close to all rats. I'm not playing anything much that isn't a rat or related or I feel is on theme. Anyway, all right, so that's Maranor. The aim is to go wide anyway. Anyway, the deck doesn't like board wipes as well, so you have to be a bit wary about when do you overcommit to the board and whether you risk having the board raft away. All right, so we'll go into the start. So we'll start with, let's start with the support card. So we're going to start with the spells. Let's just support the rats. Okay, so this is the first spell. I'll just go through them in order. So this is Swarmyard Massacre. This came from the 
This coming from the Bloomborough Commanders deck. It's a great card. It's good in, 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 in before this, I had various other cards with Massacre in, and Plague and stuff in the names, but then again, this came out and I just replaced them with it. This is really good. So this is Swarmy on Massacre. It's free of black, black for a sorcery. It creates two green uh, squirrel tokens. Don't worry about that. That's not that important, but it does. Then each creature that isn't an insect rat spider or squirrel gets minus one, minus one until end of turn for each creature you control. That's an insect rat spider or squirrel. So minimum it's going to have minus... Uh, two minus two for these but like you're going to have loads so it generally wipes wipes the board and leaves your with your board intact all right that's swarm your massacre that's the sort of thing so this is one of the recursion spells this is patriarch's bidding this is from the original onslaught one of my favorite cards in the game because i like these kind of recursive spells all right this is patriarch's bidding free of black and a black for a sorcery it's each player choose a creature type each player returns all creatures of a type chosen this way from his or her graveyard to play so normally, you if they're not playing a creature-based deck, uh, sorry, a tribal-based deck, they're going to bring back a couple of things, whereas you're going to bring back nearly all your creatures, and it's really good, especially if you have IR and stuff like that out. Then we have Plague Wind. So this is one of the only of uh, one of the other, all the removal spells in the deck. This is a nine drop sorcery. It's destroy all creatures you don't control that can't be regenerated. I was playing this one because it's on theme. I thought with the theme with the plagues. And that is on theme uh, to the deck and what rats do. And then they're associated with like the plague dating back to like medieval times and stuff. If you don't want to play this, you can play uh, you can play Garrick's Wake, which is the same thing at better. And that card's cheap as well. It's sort of like a pound card. And that basically blows up Plains Walkers as well. And there's also, there's the, uh, the I can't remember what it is. I should remember, but it's like a, a five mana one that destroys all creatures that aren't of chosen type. That should probably be in here as well, but haven't got round to it. Anyway, the, the current list on Moxville will always be underneath. I mean, I'm pretty happy with this build as is more or less. There's a couple of cards that are probably interchangeable, and if some of the rats get better, then you can take them out. Anyway, this is Sears of S stock. So this is worth explaining. This is one of the first uh, promos. So this is came from what was one of the novels. So there was a series of books that came out what near when magic started that had a series of promos in there i think they were called the uh, were they arena I, I can't remember what the promo series was called all right this is one of them so this is sewers of s stock there was also mana crypt it was the original way that and naffy dragon and some other one i believe which i think i might have the i have the dragon i believe but not the, the crypt unfortunately all right sewers of s stock for two black and a black for an instant it basically reads, if target creature is attacking, it cannot be blocked until end of turn. Play before before blockers, blah, blah, blah. Uh, if you can't find this card, don't worry about it. I just had it in because I thought it was flavorful. I don't think it's particularly good. It's not bad about making your creature unblockable, but I don't feel it's amazing. Then we've got Night Dealings. So this is kind of like a tutor on enchantment. I'm not playing a like demonic tutor and vampire tutor and just, unlike the, any of the other tutors in this deck. I'm playing this one because this is on flavor. It's got uh, it's got the like the Nizumi on it. Anyway, it's got it's two black and black for an enchantment. It's whenever a source you control deals damage to another player, put that many counters theft counters on it. And it's two black and black. Remove the theft counters from night dealing. Search your library for a non land. We convert a mana cost X, reveal it and put it to your hand and then shuffle your library. So you're normally likely to cheat for stuff like a uh, coat of arms and stuff like that. All right, so this deck I don't feel is as powerful as my other decks. I would I haven't looked it up on, on like the uh, sort.com list. I think it's going to be around a six out of ten, which is under some of my decks. It's not terrible, but it's it's quite vulnerable to rafts, and there's not a huge amount you can do. But like you play cards. Oh, right, this is one of the cards. So this is Meat Hook Massacre. This is probably one of the most expensive cards in the deck. So for those that don't know Meat Hook Massacre, it's basically a, a, a board wipe combined with like a drain life and a soul warden kind of effect so it's an x spell for x black and a black on a legendary enchantment when it enters each creature gets minus x minus x until end of turn the best way to kill things in commander are either give them minus x minus x or x all them basically and it's, it reads whenever a creature you control dies each opponent loses one life and your commander sacks creatures as well so you you have things dying and it's whether a creature an opponent control dies you gain one life then we have Bolas Citadel, so that's another one of the alternate win conditions in the deck. Everyone knows Bolas Citadel, this is one of the promos. Uh, this has been printed as a promo at least two, three times. Anyway, it's three of black, black, black. 
for an artifact, legendary artifact, you may look at the top card of your library any time. You may play the top card of your library if you cast a spell, play life equal to its mana, converted mana cost rather than its cost. And it's sat 10 land, non land permits. Each opponent loses 10 life. Very easy to do in this deck because you've got loads of, of, of tokens. Then we've got Vanquisher's Banner, which is an artifact, which is another one of the things that enables your uh, creatures to grow in size. So this is five mana artifact. As it enters the battlefield, you choose a creature type, rats. Creatures you control of the chosen type get plus one, plus one. And it's whenever you cast a creature spell of the chosen type, draw a card. So it's card advantage in mono black and other colours that can't get it. Ubiquitous one, this is Coach of Arms. This is one of the best best cards in the deck. You may not be able to play it in all matchups, but you can play it when, when, when you're winning, you can play this card and you 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 will win. It enables your army of lots of rats to get very, very large. So it basically gives each creature plus one, plus one for each other creature on the battlefield that shares at least one creature type. It's worth bearing in mind, this does your opponents as well, but not normally relevant. Then we've got Door of Destinies, another artifact. This one being from the law, original law, and it's dating back, it says 19th of January 2008. On the, that was when the promo at the time. You can use whichever one. I just like trying foiling things because I'm a whale. As it's Doors of Destiny comes in play, choose a creature type. Whenever you play a spell of that type, put a charge count on Door of Destinies. It's creatures you control of that type. Get plus one, plus one for each charge count on Door of Destinies. Then we have Urza's Incubator, and these dropped in price recently due to the uh, reprint in MMA, MH3. Uh, right, so Urza's Incubator is being a free mana artifact. As Urza's Incubator enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Creatures of the chosen type cost two less to cast, and as you see, it's got the potion symbol, which was the original uh, sy symbol for the for Urza's. I can't remember which one it was, was that Destiny, or, or, or I can't remember which one of the Urza's block it was, but it was in Urza's block anyway. Right, so then we have, well, I'll go, get to the main bit and the creatures in a minute. All right, we aim for about 30 minutes on this video. Right, so we've got Bontu's Monument. Um, these say three mana art legendary artifacts. So quite a lot of the artifacts in this deck are legendary. It's black creatures, spells you control of the cost, one less to cast. It's when you cast a creature spell, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. And then we go on to the equipment section. I'm not currently playing shoes and boots to give the Maranora hexproof at this moment. I don't. I feel they might be better than some of the stuff I'm playing, but I'll see how it goes. All right. Grafted exoskeleton is worth. So this is a four mana artifact equipment. So it's basically a quick creature plus two plus two and infect. So infect is it deals damage to players in the form of. Uh, damage to creatures in the form of minus one, minus one counters into player in the form of poison counters. And basically they lose when they get 10 poison counters. So it's an alternate win condition. And there's other things that give things in fact. This is just being one of them. All right. It, the, the, the skeleton has a drawback. Though. When it becomes unattached from permanent, sack the permanent. But you can use it in ways to put it on a token, then sack it and do various other things. Right. There's more other artifacts. So this is Sword of the Prawns. This card is great in this deck. It's four mana for an artifact. It has an equip cost of three. It reads, as long as equip creature is tap, tap creatures, you can draw a plus two plus O, so it makes all your team large. And as long as equip creature is untapped, untapped creatures you control get plus O plus two, so that's good on the defensive. But it also has a three mana ability. So it's, you may tap or untap equip creature. So you can basically use Maranor's ability twice and you can, can combine it with other things. And you can do it, it's a good mana sink. Right, so then we have Illusionist Braces, so that's another artifact equipment. It's two mana, this one, and this is uh, basically a quick cost of three. And it's when an ability of equipped creature is activated. If it isn't a mana ability, copy the ability. You may choose new targets for the copy, so it enables you to double up on the Maranora's ability. Then we have Skull Clamp, probably possibly the best equipment ever printed. It's one of the best ones anyway. It's certainly one in the top three anyway. All right, this is Skull Clamp, the one mana artifact. It has a quick cost of one. It's a quick creature gets plus one, minus one. It's when a quick creature is put into a graveyard, draw two cards. So you normally do it on, on one of your tokens and then sac it, sacrifice it and draw some more cards. Then we've got Patchwork Banner, which is the uh, ma just a mana rock from uh, the current set. It's from Bloomborough. It's one of the best cards in Bloomborough. Certainly in constructed anyway, sees play in all sorts of formats. Anyway, Patchwork Banner is a free, uh, but people enjoying Bloomborough. I mean, I was I enjoyed Bloomborough, but they, it wasn't out long enough. It basically wasn't around for very long. Wizards are printing far too many sets, unfortunately. And we need to say, although the Bloomborough was fun and enjoyable, I don't think it was around for long enough. Anyway, we've got Dustmore coming up. Anyway, what are people's uh, 
warts of, of the, how many sets they're printing, let me know in the comments. All right, patchwork banners of free mana, artifact mana rock. It doesn't really affect Commander as much, though, though to keeping up on the cards. If It's more if you're playing various com the competitive formats like Standard and that. And so I'm playing Limited as well, mostly. So I, I, I play Limited a lot as well, not 100% all of it, but like I play a lot. So anyway. So we've got patchwork ban. It does keep the limited formats fresh, though, because they don't go stale, but you can't build up the card pool to get for constructed. Patchwork ban is a free mana and mana rock. As it enters, you choose a creature type, rats. It's creatures you control of the chosen type, get plus one, plus one, and it taps for a mana of any color. Then we have the normal mana rocks. We've got soul ring, take your pick. And we've got arcane signet. This one looks a bit like the affinity gauntlet from Marvel. Marvel set will be next year. All right. Then we go on to the I'll do the I'll do the rats themselves. So let's go with the rats. So we start off with the thing. There's quite a lot of them. Okay, so we've got Nazumi Link Breaker from uh, Outlaws of Thunder Junction. So basically, this is one one when he dies, create a mercenary with target creature you control plus one plus oh. Then we've got Typhoid Rat. Quite a lot of these are foil. And uh, that's the ones from uh, Tarkir. So it's got the kind of the the symbol is that's the salt eye one, I believe. It's a typhoid rat. It's a 1 1 death touch for one. And we've got rancid rat. 1 1 death toucher. Rats have got quite well known for death touch and the play. This has also got an ability which is a bit less well known. This is sulk. Skulk, sorry, not sulk. So the, it skulk reads this creature can't be blocked by creatures with greater power. And we've got rotting rats. It's a 1 1 for one. It ha when it comes into play, each player discard a card. And it has on earth one and black, so you can return uh, play it from your graveyard for that cost. And you basically gains haste, remove it from the uh, game at the end of the turn. All right, so we've got Ruin Rat, so that's another Death Toucher on a 1 1. When it dies, except target card from the present graveyard. Then we've got the old school flip cards, so this is Nizumi Short Fang. So these are from original Kamigawa. So I'll show you. So basically, it starts on this side, Nizumi Short Fang, so it's a one and black for a 1 1. One and black, target opponent, discards a card, then this player has no card in their hand, it flips into Nizumi short So it flips into Stab Whisker, which is a 3-3, three, three, and it's the beginning of each opponent's upkeep. The player loses one life for each card, fewer than three in his hand. The so Rack is the card where it's the equivalent of, so it's a flip version of that. So we've got Skull Snatchers, also from Kamigawa. There are lots of cards from Kamigawa, and, and the Neon Dynasty Kamigawa cards will be in here as well, showing you some... They gave the deck a lot of cards because before that it wasn't great, and then when that deck, when Kamigawa uh, New and Dynasty came out, it improved quite a lot. All right, so it's one and black for two one. It also has ninjutsu. Ninjutsu for those that don't know is basically ninjutsu reads ninjutsu. You pay X, return an unblocked creature you control, put the card into play from your hand, tapped and attacking. So this one is black singular. Whenever it Skull Snatcher deals combat damage to a player, remove up to two target cards in the player's graveyard from the game. It's also good about bouncing your ETB creatures, of which there's some of. Nizumi Cutthroat, so it's a 2 1 with fear. It can't block. It's an aggressive creature. It was quite good in the format at the time for Limited from original Kamigawa. And then we go through the base of the cycle. So this is Nizumi Grave Robot. And this is one of the better graveyard piece, hate pieces in the deck, anyway. It starts out as a 2 1. One and black, move target card in the opponent's graveyard from the game. If card, no cards in the graveyard, flip Nizumi Grave Robin. It flips into Night Eyes the Desecrator and it flips into a 4 2. And it's put a 4 and a black, put target creature card in the graveyard from play under your control. And it's worth bearing one. These ones are instant speed. Alright, so we've got Greater Skull, just a 2 2. It's basically a bear, it's a zombie rat. Then we go Blight Belly Rat, so that's a 2-2 two -two with Toxic 1 when he dies, proliferate. Then we've got Sinuous Vermin, so it's another 2-2 two -two for 2. This one's got Monstrosity, which means you pay 3 black black. If the creature isn't monstrous, put 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. As long as it's monstrous, it has Menace. It's just a bear. You're just looking at playing a load of cheap costing things, playing Marinor as soon as, as possible and going wide, basically. Right, so this is Nizumi Prowler from the Kam the newest Kamigawa, so Neon Dynasty. So we've got one and black for a free one. Also has Ninjutsu. When it enters the battlefield, target creature you control gains death touch and life link until end of turn. 
Let me get back to portals. So this is this is swarm rats. This is similar to other cards, but this is quite good. This one, it's not as well known as some of them. So this is basically an X one, but swarm of rats' power is equal to the number of rat cards you have in play. So it's a bit like a pack rat. But not quite. But this was from Portal way before Pack Rat. And he's talking of Pack Rat, we get to Pack Rat. So this is one of the best rats ever printed. This is one on a black for an XX. Its power and toughness are equal to the number of rats you control. But it has another ability on it. It has two and a black to discard a card, put a token that's a copy of Pack Rat into play. So it can go out of hand quite quite quickly. And then we've got Crit Rats, which is also an, uh, what, two and a black for a 1-1. One, one. It's a all star. It's really good in lots of formats. It, it was good in like pauper and stuff around that because it was printed as a common and at lowest rarity. Anyway, it has an ability which is X. It deals X damage to each creature in each play. You can only spend black man on it, but like that's not really a drawback in this deck. Then we have uh, this scrib nibbler. This is probably a bit of filler to be honest. This is two black for one one. It basically taps to X on the top card of target player's library. If it's a land card, you gain one life. But it has landfall whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, you may untap it. I did use it once, I believe, to exile a card of someone who tutored for a card to the top of the library, and then I exiled it off the top of their library. But that can probably be removed at some point when they get some better apps. All right, this, these are the from Wild of Eldraine again. So this is Voracious Vermin. This is quite good as well. It's two and a black for a 2-1. When it enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one black rat token with the creature can't block. Quite a lot of the rats. I mean, the ones the commander make can block, but there's other rats can't block generally. Some of them can't. Anyway, it's whenever another creature you control dies, put a plus one, plus one count on it, so it goes quite large. Uh, this is just the uh, rat, rat with fears, 2-1. And then we've got stronghold rats. So we're going to pause at this one. So this one has a mechanic called shadow. I mean, you say I'm dedicating this video to my chinchilla shadow that passed away, unfortunately, only about a week back. My little little friend, he was taken from me. He he developed uh, dental complications and he passed away about a week back. So this video goes out to the memory of Shad Shad Shadow Chinchilla. He he was my little fr little friend. He wasn't a a rat technically, but he's a, he was a chinchilla. So it's a rodent. For those that don't know what a chinchilla is, they should check out my chinchilla video I did showing them a, a while back. Anyway, it'll be linked in the playlist in the description. I link all my things in various playlists. There's one for the chinchillas and things. All right. This video goes out to my little my little friend. He was taken from me. I mean, say so he he they can live to twenty. Unfortunately, he wasn't even two. Uh, anyway, uh, I miss you, little man. Anyway, his friend his friend still Sonic is still with me. Anyway, anyway, and it goes out to Shudder Shudder Chinchilla, my little friend. All right, we'll get back to the magic. Anyway, stronghold rats two and a black for two one. It, it, oh. It's worth bearing in mind, uh, Shadow, Shadow he, ha he, did, he, he did have something in common with the video. He had, there's two different head types in chinchillas, and he was the one with the, which resembles a rat with the long in, elongated snout, I would describe it as. All right. All right, so Shadow, the magic mechanic, means this creature can, can't, can block or only be blocked by creatures with Shadow because they, they're basically on another separate plane, so they're basically how they... That works. All right. It's whenever Stronghold Rats deals combat damage to a player, each player discard the card on a 2-1 body. They'll go to more toxic creatures, or in fact, as they used to be called, toxics, the more recent ones. So this is one and a black black for a 2-1 Ica Rat from uh, the Mirrodin one. Scars of Mirrodin, actually, the one with the second one. So this has got Infect, the creature do Yeah, we know what Infect does. It's when the Ica Rats enters the battlefield, each player gets a poison counter. That's you included, not normally relevant. Septic rats, 2-2 two, two in fact for three, one a black and a black. When it attacks, if defending players poisoned, it gets plus one, plus one. It's worth bearing in mind, your commander gives all these things evasion as well, though, so they're, they're, they're not that difficult to get through to people. We've got Lord Skitter Butcher from Eldraine again. There were quite a few rats in Eldraine. Well, there's mice in Bloomborough as well, so like if you want other... Uh, other rodents. There we go. All right, Lord Skitter Butcher two and black for two three. I'm not sure there's enough in the entire deck of mice though. This when it enters, you get a choice. Make a make a one one rat that can't block. 
You may stack another creature if you do scry to draw a card or creature you control game menace, which is another form of evasion. Very useful. Then we go Nizumi Ronin. This card is only a bit of filler, to be honest. Oh, let's see, the, the sun's getting in my eyes. Right, so Nizumi Ronin is a two and a black for a free one. This is from original Kamigawa. It's got a mechanic called Bushido. Bushido reads, when this creature blocks or becomes blocked, it gets plus one, plus one until the end of the turn, where X is the number, basically. So this is from the original Kamigawa. It's not amazing, to be honest. That probably can go if there's something better. Right. Don't worry, so once we get through the uh, the creatures, there's going to be a brief other section for the other things. There's not that many things outside the creatures anyway. I mean, Nizumi Blade Blesser, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. I mean, you say I'll definitely be doing more in my Commander series for sure. I will also be doing other vi other videos on Magic. I mean, you can say carry on doing the thing. There'll be a pack opening in about a week. And as normal, I do a giveaway for the pack opening. So I'd give away some Arena Code cards and stuff. All right, so thank you very much for watching. And we said this is Nizumi Blade Blesser, two in black for a free two. It has Death Touch as long as you control an artifact and Menace as long as you control an enchantment. So it can have Death Touch quite often often and the uh, menace is not as often right so we go into to some more stuff from the most current set bloom Burrow. so this is a da dagger fang duo so this is the three two with death touch when it enters you may mill two cards on a death touch body and we've got pestilence rat so this is another of the x power rat things this power and toughness is equal to the number of other rats in play. This one is global as well, no matter who controls them. So if people are playing changelings and stuff, it's on an X, X3. And this is from original Ice Age. Then we go Nashi. This card's just good in general. So this is Nashi Moon Sage Scion. One and a black, black for a 3-2. It has Ninjitsu, three and a black. It's when it, it deals combat damage to a player X or the top card of, of each player's library. Until the end of the turn, you may play this... Uh, one of those cards, if you cast a spell this way, pay life equal to its mana value rather than paying its mana cost. Then we go Krimon, it's the Rat King, so that's the pre uh, bundle promo. So it's other rats you control have Toxic 1, so it has Toxic 1 on a 1 black black 3-3 three, three body. When it enters the battlefield, look at the top 5 cards of your library and reveal any number of rats from among them and put the reveal cards into hand, put the rest on the bottom in random order. Ambusher is just a 3-2... Life Linker on a four mana and Ninjutsu one of Life Link, and then we got Ashko. So, this is one of the okay. So, I would think this is also a valid rat commander if you're playing a, a rat deck. And I said this is also good, right? If you want to play this over Maranora, it may be okay as well. I mean, it's, it's also quite expensive, though, as well. So, the, this only has the printing, this comes from Jumpstart. So, this is free and a black for free four. It's when Ashko. Attacks or blocks other rats you control plus X plus X, where X is number of rats you control. It's at the beginning of your end step, you may mill four cards if you do return up to two rat creatures from your graveyard to your hand. So it's another kind of like go wide kind of card as well. It's one of the better cards in the deck as well. It's quite expensive, but it could do with a reprint. Oh, this is Wave of Rats. This is three and a black for a four two with trample. When it dies, if it dealt combat damage to a player this turn, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. It has Blitz, which means that you can cast it for the Blitz spell against haste. And when it dies, draw a card, sack up, beginning of end step. So it basically gets through. It will keep coming back, basically. We've got Throat Slit, one of the better cards from uh, Kamigawa, the original. It's four and a black for a 2 2, but it has an Ejitsu 2 and a black. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, destroy target non black creature the player controls. They've got Okubo Gang Shinobi for a free and a black for a free two and ninjutsu free and a black. There are lots of ninjas in the deck as well. There are, some of these are good in uh, other uh, ninja commander as well. It's whenever it, Shinobi deals combat damage to player, that player discards two cards. And they've got the last card in the deck. We've got Inkai, Servant of Kamigawa. Servant of Oni, sorry, not Kamigawa. I was thinking of the set it's from. And no, this is from the FTV of the time. So when people remember FTVs, they were like boxes with various cards, they're all foil in it, and they did various different ones, and then then, then they, they, this was one of them, it was this FTV20, I can't, yeah, one of them had the TMS Mind Sculptor in it, and they did various ones themed, they did one on artifacts, one on land, then they did some other ones, they were like four or five, they did them for a while anyway, all right, that's Inkai, Inca, Servant of Oni, it's got, it's a free, uh, four black black for five four, it's got Ninjutsu free of black, and black, and when it deals combat damage to a player, you may put target creature from the player's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control, it also has regeneration one and black, right, so let's go into the non-rats, 
That was all the rats. I think there's a good 20, 30 of them. Anyway, these are honorary rats. So we've got Metallic Mimic. So it's like a, a creature lord. It's two mana for a 2 1 artifact. It enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. It's the chosen creature type in addition to all other types. Each creature you control of the chosen type enters the battlefield with an additional plus one, plus one counter on it. So it means your tokens are big as well. It doesn't say non token. Adaptive Automaton is a free mana 2 2. As it enters, choose a creature type. It is the chosen type in addition. Other creatures of the chosen type, plus one, plus one. Right, so these are the non-rats at all. Or most of them are. All right, so this is Pipe of the Swarm. This is the pro the bundle promo. So it's rats who control have menace, which means they can only be blocked by two or more creatures. It has one and a black, create a one, one black rat creature token. It also has two and a black, black, sack three rats, gain control of target, target creature. Um, so that's a, like pretty good. Right, so now we go on to the thing. We've got Iara. Sorry, I'm better than that. Yeah, the light's going. All right, so we've got Iara, Fist of Lockwain. So this is black, black, black for 2-3. It's when it or another black creature enters the battlefield under control. Each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. It also has sack another black creature. Draw a card. Pretty good. Right, then we go on to the pair. Uh, the, I'll do these next. So these are basically the pair of creatures that create a meld. I'll, I'll, I'll show you the meld. So this is the first one being the human four and a black for us, Midnight Scavenger. It's a three, three. It's when it enters the bathroom, you may turn target creature god with converting mana cost three or less from graveyard to play. And it melds with graph rats. Give me a minute and I'll show you. So this is graph rats. This is one on black for two, one. That's a rat. And basically, if at the beginning of combat on your turn, if you own and control graph rats and a creature named Midnight Scavenger, you exile them and you make the host. And I will show you what it creates. I don't know if that's a great thing with the lighting. Hold on, let's see if I can adjust the lighting. I probably should have done that before we started, to be honest. Yeah, sorry about that. Anyway, I hope the video comes out all right. Anyway, this is the Chittering Host. So it's basically a five, six with haste and menace. When it enters the battlefield, other creatures you control get plus one, plus zero, and gain menace until the end of turn. <laughs> As opposed to my friend who's Dennis, Dennis the Red Met, the Red Menace. All right, right. So we're getting on to the other stuff. So we've got a chittering witch. I should have put the curtains. I should have drawn the curtains. I hope the video comes out all right. Anyway, so it's three and a black for two two. It's when chittering witch enters the battlefield. Create number one one black rat creatures equal tokens equal to number of opponents you have, and it's one and a black sacrifice creature. Target creature gets minus two minus two until end of turn. All right, there's that. We got a little bit more. Nearly there. The Ogre Slumlord, so this is basically a free and a black black for a free free. It's whenever a non-token creature dies, you may put a 1-1 one, one black rat creature token onto the battlefield. And rats you control have death touch. It's worth bearing in mind, this is, it, it includes your opponent's creatures dying. And we've got another Ogre. We've got Rat Catcher for 4 and a black for a 4-4 four, four with fear. It's the beginning of your upkeep. You may search your library for a rat, rat, reveal it and put it into your hand if you do shuffle your library. And then we have the um, patron of the Nizumi. So this has a mechanic. This is offering on it. So basically, it's a five, a black, and a black for a six, six. It has me offering mechanics. So basically, it means you can play the card anytime you can play an instant by sacking a rat and paying the difference. Whenever a permanent is put into an opponent's graveyard, from, uh, that player loses one life. Right, so that's all the creatures in the deck and all the spells. Let's just do the land. And then normally, I think there's there's 35 in this deck by the look of it. There should probably be 36. I've made, I've probably miscounted. There should probably be a Nick Force in the, in the land slot. Anyway, this is Swarm Yard. Got a, re a reprint recently, so it should be, uh, it's cheaper now than it used to be. It's one of the best lands in the deck. It taps with mana and taps to regenerate target insect, rat, spider, or squirrel. Yeah, it even works on squirrels as well, or insects, if you've got those kind of things. I do have a squirrel deck as well. I've showed that before. Uh, Path of Ancestry, pick your favourite one. Enters tapped. You, if you use mana in your commander's colour, when you, the man is used to cast a creature spell that shares a type with the commander, scribe one. We've got Free to Each City, which is one of the best cards from Bloom Borrow. So this is the, what is the most expensive, one of the most expensive cards in Bloom Borrow. I got lucky, I got two, I think. All right. So it basically taps, choose a creature type, taps for colourless or two in the taps, choose a colour 
add an amount of mana of that color equal to the number of creatures you control of the chosen type. So it's going to be lots in this. We've got Bajuka Bog, Exile Graveyard. We've got Cabal Stronghold, which is like Cabal Coffers Light. And we've got Cabal Coffers itself. And then we round out, we've got... How many? So before I get... That's my favorite swamp. That's the one with the lure in. It's like a flower swamp. I and mean, that's my favorite swamp. Pick your favorite. I'm going to see how many of those we get. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine. All right, there's 20, 29 swamps. All right, that's the video done. So thank, thanks very much for watching. And as I say, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. What are your favorite tribal uh, decks in Commander? Let me know. I aim to cover some more in the series. Don't forget to join me in about... We will be back probably within a week uh, for the cracking packs for Dustmore. And we say thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again soon. Thanks very much. Bye.